G'day and welcome to Carra Cottage. Today I'm going to show you how I make my kombucha right from the start through the first fermentation through to the secondary fermentation where I put it into stubbies and cap it like you do homebrew. Um, and I'll show you the fruit I use. I usually use passion fruit, but it's coming to the end of the season now and the cockatoos have been going crazy destroying the property. Oh, back to steal more passion fruit. What I do have though, is a beautiful supply of bananas. Um, I've got a whole bunch frozen from my harvest, my last harvest, so I'm gonna use some of that today. So a couple of things you're gonna need um, at the start to make your kombucha is a scoby. Um, you can get those from someone else that makes kombucha because they actually grow and multiply as you're making it. You can buy SCOBY starter kits. I actually bought this one off Gumtree. I just looked up SCOBY and there's quite a few people selling, selling them on Gumtree. What they'll come with is some starter liquid, which is um, a batch of previous tea, which you'll then add to um, your sweetened black tea that I'll show you a bit later. It's a pretty ugly looking thing, as you can see. It's like a big dirty mushroom. Um, what it stands for is symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast and what it does it eats the sugars in the black tea in your sweetened tea mixture and it creates probiotics so good bacteria carbon dioxide and minute amounts of alcohol and you'll also need a nice big jar um, you can use a mason jar i've got this drink dispenser with a tap on it i find that makes it easier when i'm doing my secondary fermentation um, as you can see, this one's got um, a batch ready to bottle it. I'll show you a bit later. So what we're gonna do first is make a sweetened black tea um, for the scoby to start to eat. So the way that I do that is I get, I just use tea bags. I'm actually using decaffeinated tea just because um, I like to have one in the evening. I don't want it to stop me from sleeping. So I roughly make about probably six to seven liters in my, um, my container that I use. So in that I add, I use 10 tea bags. So that's 10 tea bags I have here. Um, what I usually do is cut off the, cut off the tags so that you don't have cardboard floating around in your tea. Um, just pop them in there. Um, then I fill it up with water. This is just a small pot. So what I do is I make a concentrated sweet tea, then I add it to my container and then just top it up with water to the normal um, tea to water ratio. But I just make it concentrated first. So I'm just gonna put some water in here. So we'll pop that on the stove. What I'll do, I'll usually let that um, come to the boil and turn it off. I'll add two cups of sugar to that amount, um, stir it in and let it cool. It's just about at the boil, I'm gonna switch it off. Um, and I'm gonna add two cups of sugar. I'm just gonna stir that in. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is we've got our tea that's um, brewed and cooled down with the sugar in it. I've got my nice big drink dispenser that I'm gonna to use to brew the kombucha in. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the tea in there. So I get the tea bags out. Always make sure you've got clean hands. For those of you that don't like using your fingers, you can strain it, you can use a spoon, whatever you feel like you need to do to get it out. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tip my tea into my jar. And what I'm gonna do now is fill, top it up with water. This room temperature cold water is good. So we're just topping this up, maybe three quarters of the way up to the top. So that's our diluted concentrate that we made before. So that's about seven liters I've got here. Um, then what we do is we get our, 
our SCOBY and our starter liquid, which is the last tea's previous batch. You tip the liquid in. Just like that. Then we get our SCOBY and we just float that in the top. I usually put it in the same way that it came out, so it's floating in the same way. Um, and there we have it. So what we then do is put a, I use a tea towel to put over the top and I secure it with some nice strong elastic bands. So I just sit that on the kitchen bench for seven to 10 days um, and let it brew and ferment. Um, to find out when it's ready, I usually taste it and I know exactly how I like it and when I'm ready to do my secondary fermentation. So here we are, we're ready to start our secondary fermentation. Our kombucha's been brewing for about oh, 10 days. Um, in winter, I like to leave it for 10 days. In summer, about seven, depending on the temperature. Um, it's just how I like it. What you need to do is taste it and get it to the way you like it. Um, so some people like it a bit more on the vinegary side. Some people like it a bit more on the sweeter side. So it's completely up so to you. The first thing we're gonna do now is take the scoby out. You can see how that's changed color. Actually, it's gone from like a black tea to a lighter color. Um, that's uh, that's from the scoby eating the sugar out and changing it. Um, let's have a look inside. So there you can see the scoby floating on top. Um, I'm just gonna make sure you've always got clean hands. I'm gonna pop that in a, in a glass bowl here. And then what I'm gonna do is take out about a cup of liquid, thereabouts, give or take, and reserve that with the scoby. And we'll add that to the next batch and that'll get us started um, for our next batch. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut our frozen bananas up um, into really small pieces so they can fit down the neck of the bottle. So what I've done, I've cut it down the middle, so almost cut it into quarters, and then just cut it into little pieces. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put our little pieces of banana in our bottles. Um, I cut them up really small. I'll probably put enough pieces of banana in just to cover the bottom of the, the bottle, maybe four or five pieces. And what the sugar in the fruit does is the bacteria that's still in our kombucha, when it's bottled, it will continue to eat the sugars in the fruit. And I'll actually add a little bit of coconut sugar as well, because I find bananas aren't as sugary as passion fruit. Um, yeah, so that's what creates a secondary fermentation is the bacteria eating the sugars in your fruit and whatever other sugar you put in there. So let's do that now. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna add a little pinch of coconut sugar and what that will do, that will help that fermentation process and help carbonate it as well. If you use high sugar fruits like um, mango and passion fruit, you actually don't need this extra boost of sugar. Um, but if you experiment yourself, you'll figure all that out. I just put a pinch, this is a really small spoon. Um, probably wouldn't even be a quarter of a teaspoon, so I'll put that in each bottle. And now that we have our banana and coconut sugar in our stubbies, we're gonna actually put the kombucha in there. So I, just, I love this um, drink dispenser with the tap. It makes it so much easier. I used to use a mason jar and a funnel and it was a lot more difficult. So I just fill that up, like right up to halfway um, up into the neck there. You'll see it on the video. Just like that. I'll do that with all of them. I'll set them aside, I'm ready to put the crown seals on. Stay tuned and keep watching. Okay, now that we've got our kombucha in our bottles, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cap them. So what I've got here is a um, bottle capper. I picked this one up off Gumtree too. I get everything off Gumtree for about 10 bucks. Um, so all we do is we get our crown seals like that. Pop it on top, push it down, 
spread out. I use the inverter to get everything mixed up and we're ready to go. So let's do that again. And there it is, it really is that simple. I'll just leave them now for four to five days at room temperature to, to for that secondary fermentation to take place. I'll put them in the fridge and they'll be ready to drink. And here's one I prepared earlier. See that nice carbonation in there? Now I'm going to sit down and enjoy the fruits of my labour. I hope you have a good day.